We have already done the head in the last retopology video. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and watch it. I also explained the basics and all the retopology tools in that video, so make sure you watch that one first so you won't get confused by this one. Continuing from the neck, move the mouse to the bottom of the face, and when it turns blue, extrude the face to the bottom. Then go to the right side of the face, hold Ctrl and drag out a new face. Then do that over and over and go around the neck. Make sure you have the mirror modifier enabled, so you only do one side and Blender do the other side for you. And also enable clipping so both sides stick to each other. We wanna do the exact same thing to the next three rows, so just extrude and go around the model. Now extrude this one and fill in the middle, but don't go around the model again. Instead create another row. After that extrude under the armpit, then go around the back and connect it to the other side. Now extrude to the bottom for two more rows. Hold shift and drag across the face to select it, shift D to duplicate and place it on the bitty button, then make it smaller. Extrude the right side then hold control and extrude this part to the middle and do the same thing with the bottom. Now just extrude the whole thing to the outside. We can now go back to the ribcage area and complete another row of faces. After that we can connect the middle row to the bitty button area, then continue filling the rest of the faces around the middle to the back. Once you reach this face, go down, extrude the middle faces to the bottom. We want to wrap it around the crutch, then continue straight to the back side and connect it with the torso. Then we can extrude the sides and connect the front side of the body to the back side. Pretty easy. I leave out the buttocks empty for now, but make sure to keep the same amount of faces on the top and bottom so we can fill it up easily later. Now we're left for the legs only. Hold Alt and click on the edge. Turn off snapping just for now, cause it might ruin the extruding process. Then press E and extrude to the knees. This way we can easily add loop cuts in the middle by pressing Ctrl R. After that enable snapping again and start readjusting the points, so they stick to our object. Knees need a bit more topology since it might bend in the animation or posing in general. So hold shift and select the face, duplicate and drop it on the knees, expand it from each side. Let's do the same thing to the back side as well. The face count don't match up, so let's add a loop cut to the back and front. Now we can go back to select mode, select both edges and press F to bridge the knees to the thighs. Then extrude around the leg and connect the front side to the back. Now hold alt click on the bottom edge to select the full edge, then extrude to the bottom one by one. 
at the rest by pressing Ctrl R, then readjust the vertices until it's fully on the surface. And don't forget to enable snapping again, because otherwise it doesn't work. My feet doesn't have toes, but if yours does, it would apologize just like hand fingers. And we're gonna talk about fingers later in the video. Keep extruding to the bottom, but when you reach this face, extrude it forward and bring them together at the end. Then fill in the bottom and try to bridge both sides together as best as you can. And remember to add loop cuts if it's absolutely necessary. Back to the top, start extruding from here, but don't go to the back, instead wrap it around the shoulder. Just like legs, you can select the outer edge and extrude. From here, just extend it forward to the elbow. For the elbow, we want to do the same thing as the knees, which is selecting another face and duplicate and place it on the spot. Again, expand it to all directions. Now in the select mode, select both edges and press F to bridge, then wrap it around and connect both sides. From now on, it's just like what we did with the legs. Then from here, change the direction to the thumb and wrap it around that finger. Once you reach the tip of the thumb, connect both sides. If you don't have enough faces to bridge, you can add a loop cut to create one more face. Then you can bridge easily. Again, duplicate a face and drop it on another finger, wrap it around that finger and make sure you end up with an even number of faces, so you can bridge the tip later with no problem. Hold alt and select the edge, and extrude to the bottom few times. In the wireframe mode or by pressing L, select the full finger and duplicate. Bring them to the next finger and fit it with the finger as best as you can. Do that for the other fingers as well. Then start bridging the fingers together. And after that, start filling the middle by bridging the faces together as best as you can. And try to avoid making any triangles. Now go around the model and fill in any empty space you see. Also readjust the points and make them more organized and not as stretched. Yeah. 
If you're sure about the final model, it's time that we project it. First go to modifier properties and add a shrink wrap modifier. Select the old unoptimized model as the target and put the wrap method on project. Then enable negative to fix these weird issues. After that add a multi-res modifier. Drag it to the top of the shrink wrap because we should have added the multi-res first. Click on the subdivide button until you're happy with the details. If you ran into any problem, you can go to edit mode and mess around with the faces and vertices, especially around the bend parts to fix all the issues. Once you are really sure about the final results, you can hover your mouse on the shrink wrap modifier and press Ctrl A to apply it. And now this is what we got compared to our old model. Hope you find the video helpful. If you did, like and sub would be great. Also don't forget to check out my Gumroad and Patreon page to download the 3D files and real-time process videos. See you on the next one. Peace.